All right, hello everybody. My name is The Last Hodler, and as you probably already know from my previous videos, I am one of the lead blockchain developers for the UK's leading blockchain company called Online Blockchain. And today, I just wanted to um, go even further from our last video and talk to you about some of the other nice little pieces of code in chainparams.cpp, which is part of the Bitcoin source code, um, and some of the little bits and pieces that you might want to learn about um, that will really benefit your knowledge as far as these cryptocurrencies go. And if you're somebody that's going to be forking um, an altcoin from the Bitcoin source code, um, the information I'm going to share with you today is going to be really important. You're going to need to know this stuff um, to, I guess, get your altcoin right and not have to hard fork like I have in the past. So um, yeah, great. Let's get started. Um, the first thing I really like to talk about is um, something called the subsidy halving interval. Now, what the subsidy halving interval is, is... Um, let me explain by first saying, with Bitcoin, when you mine um, on the Bitcoin network, you get a mining reward when you find a block, when you are able to um, verify a block, okay? And that reward halves um, every um, halving interval, I guess you could say. So um, one day, um, the, the Bitcoin reward for finding a block was 50, Okay, and then the next day it was 25. Okay, that's because the subsidy halving interval was reached and then the mining reward was halved. So let's find that in the code. Um, so here we go. Um, in the main network, so we're in the main network now, um, line 77. All right, so you can see here that the halving interval is every 210,000 blocks. All right, so that means that once 210,000 blocks have been mined, it's going to, the, the mining reward is going to be halved. And then after another 210,000 blocks have been mined, it's going to be halved again and again and again and again and again until um, the maximum amount of coins allowed by the network, as defined by the network, um, have been mined. Okay, so I'll actually show you. Um, um, where exactly that is. There's a variable called max money. And so let's look that up in all right, um, amount.h. You can see here, um, line number 26, okay? We have a constant, a const variable, all right? That means it can't be changed. And it's static, which means um, it doesn't need an object to, um, to be referenced, all right? And it is um, 21 million times coin, right? So um, coin is defined um, somewhere else, and basically it just says that coin, it's a special data type, um, which allows, um, I guess, um, easier calculations on how that coin should be manipulated and worked with. But for all intents and purposes, um, you can just take out of the, what I'm saying now that there are 21 million coins that are allowed to be uh, mined on the Bitcoin network. Once those coins have been mined, there are no more coins, uh, I guess, that are going to be issued by the Bitcoin network. Okay, so um, that's that. So the thing you need to know if you're going to be forking your own cryptocurrency, um, the thing you need to know about the subsidy halving interval is that it's going to affect the issuance of your coin over time, right? So do you want your coins to be issued over a 10 year period or five year period or five month period, okay? Um, that is directly affected by the subsidy halving interview, um, um, interval, okay? There are a couple things that are going to affect, affect that, okay? There's the halving interval, but there's also the target spacing. All right, because let's say, let's say for Bitcoin, right? And this is a real world example. For Bitcoin, we have 10 minute blocks, okay? And then we have 210,000 uh, blocks before um, the mining reward halves. So you can think of that as 210,000 times 10 minutes. So 2.1 million minutes um, from the last halving interval there's going to be another halving interval and it's going to, um, the mining reward is going to be halved again. Okay, so say you have an altcoin, your altcoin, and instead of 10 minute blocks, you've thought to yourself, well, hey, I want 10 times as many transactions um, as Bitcoin uh, per 10 minutes. So I'm going to have one minute blocks. All right. But that means now the um, end subsidy halving interval, it's going to be uh, 10 times as fast as Bitcoins, right? So the issuance of your coin it's going to be 10 times as fast as Bitcoin. So you're, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to consider exactly what is the best subsidy halving interval for your coin. Uh, because as soon as you start meddling with block time and things like that, it's going to really affect the issuance of your coin over time. Okay, so that's the subsidy halving interval. That's a really important one. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about um, something else that's equally as interesting. And that is the uh, create genesis block function. Okay. Um, in cryptocurrencies and in blockchains, there is a thing called the Genesis block. And what the Genesis block is, it is the first block, 
of the blockchain. And it's a special block because it is hard-coded into the code, okay? None of the other blocks are hard-coded into the code. You kind of figure them out later. But the Genesis block is hard-coded. You have to hard-code it into the code, and then the next blocks kind of like follow on from there. Because a block has to think about, okay, I'm a block, I'm going to be a block, so I need to look at the previous block and get the previous block's hash to um, calculate my hash. And that's why it's a blockchain, because each block um, has to think about the block before it and the block before it, and that's why it's secure. But the Genesis block doesn't have a, a block before it, so you need to, um, it's a special block. It needs to have its own special uh, configuration, I guess you could say. So let's have a look at the create Genesis block function. Okay, so here we go. Line 49, the create Genesis block function. So what do we need to create a Genesis block? Well, we need a time, and that's a Unix epoch time. That's not the same kind of time that we would consider. It's a special kind of time unit called um, Unix epoch time. And you can look up what that is, but basically it's just an integer. Um, so there's the time, okay. There's the nonce. Now, right, what the nonce is, is a value. It's to do with mining and, and verifying. So if I, if I, I've, and I've done a whole video on this that I will, um, pop up in the screen right now if you really want to learn about it but basically what the nonce is is it's a value that allows you to mine a block um, that will produce a value that is satisfied uh, that, that satisfies the network and it's to do with proof of work and um, validating transactions okay so you need one of those you need a valid nonce to successfully mine the genesis block okay now the next one is a similar thing it's called n bits and what the n bits are is how, uh, I guess, difficult the proof of work is um, for you to mine your Genesis block, all right? And I also explained that in another video too, so may, I'll, I'll link that and I'll make sure you're able to see that. Okay, so the next um, parameter, or the next argument, I should say, is the version, okay? And that's the, what version of the Bitcoin protocol are we talking about, okay? Because the Bitcoin protocol, over the 10 years it's been around, it's uh, changed in its versions as um, the programmers and the developers who've been uh, working on it have adapted to you know, all of the outside factors that affect the blockchain. So there are, there are different versions that have been iterated through over the course of time. So you have to talk, you have to specify which version of Bitcoin we're talking about here, okay? And then the final one is the Genesis reward. So what is the reward for mining the Genesis block basically, okay? So those are the parameters you need. Now, you may have uh, heard of something called the uh, PSZ timestamp, all right? And um, this is the famous headline that is encoded into the Genesis block. So the Genesis block needs a special string inside it. You decide what this string is. And the premise behind this string, the, the, the timestamp, is to prove that your blockchain couldn't possibly have been made before this certain time. All right, so let me explain in more detail exactly how that works, all right? I could be Satoshi Nakamoto, right? And I made a, I made a blockchain, and before I told anybody about my blockchain, I just quietly mined it on my computer in the background and accrued for myself a whole bunch of coins, okay? Well, people aren't gonna like that. So how am I going to prove to everyone around me that I didn't mine? Because the, the, the blockchain, it doesn't have any notion of time. It doesn't know about uh, the 22nd of February. It doesn't know about that. So I need to prove to people around me that the Genesis block wasn't mined ages ago. It was mined recently so that I can show everyone that I don't have all the coins. So we have that timestamp there and that is why it is a newspaper timestamp because, okay, Satoshi Nakamoto couldn't have known what the headline for the, the times would have been before it was released. So he chose to take, he or she chose to take that um, headline and put it into the Genesis block so that he could prove, she could prove to everybody around them um, that the blockchain is is not older than that article. Okay, so that has been a little bit of information about the code surrounding the Genesis block in the Bitcoin uh, in the Bitcoin code. Um, remember to always hold it for as long as possible. Um, subscribe if you want to learn more about the Bitcoin code and how you can fork your own altcoins. And make sure you leave me a comment if you want to learn about anything in particular, um, and I'll tell you all about it.